You know, when I was a kid and I played this game for the first time, I didn't know what this thing was. And I always just tried to jump up to it and grab onto the and see if I could do anything with this thing. Yeah, probably not the best idea. Good morning, everybody. It's Midnight and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door. I can't believe I'm saying that. I'm just so stinking happy to finally be playing this game. In the last episode, we made it to the land of Rogueport, and it's a very crummy place, but with a lot of cool characters like Umbella who joined our party on this adventure. Now, in this episode, we're gonna go meet with her professor of archaeology and see if he could help us figure out where Peach went and what this legendary map is all about. And ever so conveniently, he is right stinking here. Oh, hi! There you are! Professor Frankly! Was uh? Who's there? Who wants me? Ah, yes, you. Now you, uh... I've seen your face before. Yes, that face. Wait for it. Just a moment. Don't tell me now. Silence. I'll get it right. Um, it's not Goombriel. Uh, it's not Eliza Goom. <laughs> Aha! I got it! You are Goombella, aren't you? You were in my archaeology class last year, am I right? Wow! Yes, sir! That's me. I'm Goombella, a junior at Ugoom. Go Goombas! Of course I remember you. Not to toot my own horn, but I'm pretty good at remembering. You, though, you stick out in my mind because you were such an exceptional student. And that guy behind you is... Who, me? I'm a Mario! Who? Mario, Professor! He's Mario! You know, the famous one! Oh, my apologies. I'm such a bookworm. I haven't a clue about what's hip right now. Yeah, Mario's all hip and trending with the kids nowadays and stuff. <laughs> in any case, what sort of errand brings you two all the way to a place like this? We were hoping you'd tell us about the legendary treasure set to be below Rollport. I thought that if anyone knew anything about it, you would, Professor Frankly. Of course I know about it. The reason I came here was to study that very subject. But why do you types want to learn about such a legendary treasure? You know that most say it's little more than a fairy tale, don't you? Archaeologists and historians have to search for the truth in those fairy tales, though. Me? I believe the legendary treasure truly does exist, and I really want to find it! Good point, and well made. In that case, I'll cooperate with you however I can. First of all, about the treasure. There are many mysteries surrounding it. Some say it's an infinitely vast treasure hoard, while others say it's a magical item. Some books say it's actually a monster, while still others claim that it's an empty chest. So many different theories. Obviously, it's impossible to divine the truth among them. But I'll agree on one point. To find the treasure, one must have the crystal stars. To find the treasure of yore, take the seven crystal stars to the thousand year door. You mean crystal shard in that old saying that super elderly people pass down? Indeed, as the saying goes, if you want to find the legendary treasure, you first must collect the seven crystal stars. Hold the magical map aloft before the entrance to the thousand year door. Then the stars will light the way that leads to the stones of yesterday. Yeah, a lot of the lore I've read says that if this magical map is taken to the doorway, then it'll show you where to find the crystal stars. Correct, and the thousand year door is supposedly here deep beneath this town. Yet the critical piece of the puzzle, the magical map, is lost, if only we had that map. But we do have it, Professor. Or, well, not we exactly. Mario has the magical map. What? How many of you? Really? You, you actually have it. Could I just take a quick look at it, if you don't mind? Oh yeah, absolutely. Astounding, this is it, the real thing. The one and only magical map. I'm gonna sell it on eBay. You, son, are my hero! You are great, fantastic, wonderful even! With this, we can find the Crystal Stars just by holding this aloft before the legendary door! Right on, Professor! Good golly, what are we doing just sitting here then? Goombella, Mario, off we must go this instant! Let's take the magical map to the legendary door! Let's a go! 
I bet you didn't know this rotten old thing came off, did you? <laughs> that's what she said. And no, you cannot take that thing off yourself. That's also what she said. We can use this pipe to get down under the city streets. Come on, both of you, let's get moving. Let's do what he says and head down the warp pipe. Oh wait, hang on a second, Mario. Something just occurred to me. I'm fairly certain there are quite a few hoodlums below. So uh, keep your guard up. You two know about your action commands, don't you? Of course we do. Really? A master, are you? Maybe you ought to practice them just once just to be safe. No thanks, I'm a good. If you say yes, then you actually have a fight against Gumbella, which is kind of interesting, but I spent the last episode explaining all the action commands. I don't think we need to see it again. A bold young lad, aren't you? Very well then, down we go. Just stand on the pipe and tilt down to enter it. And away we go! Well, that was a lot easier to find the underground city talked about in the Legends than I thought it was going to. Yeah, like the big old epic reveal of the legendary underground city and we just sort of stumble upon it. Here we are, we're in the underground and it's a city. Very interesting. Hey, hey man, what's up? Who's the hottie you got there with you? Ooh, you talking about the me, Mario? What's up, baby? Why don't you hang out with us for a while? We play real nice. Man, that's a fine looking Goomba doing with a tubby mustache man like that. This place really is Connecticut. Oh, it is like so sweet that you boys think I'm cute. Seriously. Yeah, guys like you make me feel like totally barfing. Now get out of our way. Ouch, that was cold. Why, you're too good for us? Come off it, sister. Nobody, nobody zings us like that. Nobody. Let's get them. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. And time for another battle. And in case you're wondering, Frank Lee is not actually a party member. He's just going to be traveling with us for the time being. He's not actually going to be doing any damage. A Goomba, a Spiny Goomba, and a Paragoomba. My, the whole Goomba family tree. The only one I should warn you about is that fellow in the middle, the Spiny Goomba. See that spike on his head? Well, jump on that and you're the one who will take damage. And even though he said he was the only one that you needed to warn us about, you tell us about the Paragoomba anyway, yes. So the Spiny Goomba, you can't jump on it. Paragoomba, you can't hammer it. Pretty stinking basic. So what we're gonna wanna do is just have Frankly explain even more lanes. Oh, that's right, I forgot to tell you the most something vital. You can press Y to change. Yes, we know about this, Frankly. Did you not watch the last episode? I know you don't like to stay hip with the kids, but come on, one of your students was in that episode. You should keep up to date with that sort of thing. So we're gonna have Goombella tattle on the Goomba. That's a Goomba. Um, yeah, I'm one of those, in case you hadn't noticed. <laughs> Ahem, it says here, Goombas are underlings of underlings. That is totally rude. Their maximum HP is two, they have an attack of one, and their defense is zero. Pretty stinking basics. And after you get their, uh, Tattalog taken care of, you can see their HP at all times. So we're gonna go ahead and jump on the first Goomba. And he's taken care of. And we're gonna use a normal guard right here just so we can tattle on the others later on. Very, very nice. We're gonna have Goombella tattle on the spiky Goomba next. That's a spiky Goomba, a spiky headed Goomba. What a creative name. So like, I like how they're all super sassy. It's not as, like, Goombari was so boring and bland. It's just like, I'm gonna explain everything. But Goombella has very sassy uh, explanations, which is why I wanna go over all of them. That spike is super pointy, so it's better to hit it with a hammer than to jump on it. Max HP is two, attack is two, defense is zero. The addition of the spike means that you'll hurt your feet if you jump on it. Duh! And we're gonna have Mario counter with the hammer. Or just attack with the hammer, not countering with it. Keep on doing stylish, which means absolutely nothing right now, so it's not super necessary that you do it. And finally, a little tattle on the Paragoomba. And we're good. That's a Paragoomba, basically a Goomba with wings. I'm jealous. Max HP is two, attack is one, defense is zero. You can't hammer it while it's flying, but rough it up and it'll totally plummet. If you hit it once for one HP of damage, then you will be able to uh, turn it into a regular Goomba. But if we just do two HP right off the bat, then we don't have to worry about it because it's already dead. And we get one star point. No, it's 10 star points because it was a big star point. Owie! Ouchies! <laughs> Later on, losers. That felt awesome. Are you ready, Mario? There are plenty more where that came from, and they'll all have it in for us. When they attack, try not to hammer them or jump on them while they're on, while they're in the field, or do try to hammer or jump on them when they're on the field. Attack ses successfully, and you could perform a first strike when you enter battle. So if an enemy catches sight of you, be sure to thump him as you go into battle. 
and you'll be able to do HP, uh, do damage to it before the battle even starts. It's very, very useful, and I recommend doing it. Anyone else down here? Doesn't look like it, so we're just gonna go all the way back around. This is a complete waste of time, except for explaining how things work and all that jazz. What you want to do is stand on this thing and head down this warp pipe right here. So I guess it wasn't a complete waste of time because we need to make our way back around eventually. And we got this little area right here. Keep on going and there's a Goomba. Let's jump on it. You struck first. I'm surprised it actually worked. I thought I didn't do it. So we just go over here and we can end the battle before it even starts. Yeah, in the original Paper Mario game, all we did was just one HP of damage uh, at the start of the battle. We actually get to do the action commands. But in this game, you could do the action commands as the first strike, so you could literally end a battle before it even begins, which is super stinking helpful. So we're gonna do it again right here, probably, as long as there's just one enemy, we don't have to worry about it. So it makes battling very, very quick and very easy and not sort of, not an uh, annoying thing to do in the slightest. But for this Let's Play, basically, if we've seen an enemy before, chances are I'm gonna cut it out and not show. Unless I'm just talking about something as we're going through, then I'll just continue the fight as I'm commentating, but for the most part, I'm probably not going to be showing off uh, too many battles because I kind of want to get stuff done, <laughs> and this is a very long game, so I'll only be showing enemies for the first time and then probably never again unless we got something new to talk about about them or stuff like that. You get the gist of it. Now we see that this item block is on the ground, so we can't jump on it, but we can hit it with a hammer and get a mushroom. Restores 5 HP. You got an item. You can use items to attack enemies and replenish your HP. Heart points. I don't know how many times they gotta tell us that. Oh, the start button. How I miss you in the newer consoles. Uh, can't do anything about this right now. We can hit this and get a fire flower, which does damage to enemies. These uh, small yellow blocks, you can just hit them with your hammer normally and get rid of them. Very, very easy. But these big honky tonky blocks over here, we can't do anything about them. They are a blockage in our path for now, so we're just gonna ignore it and head down this pipe. And over here, if we head behind this block, there is another star piece for you. Very, very nice. But what's even nicer is that if you just, hello. Not that, but if you just jump over here, okay. I did not do the first strike, but at least we'll get to show off the enemy. Uh, we'll have Gumbella Tattle on it. That's a spinny, a totally weird creature made of thin papery boards. It certainly looks unique. Nobody knows much about these creatures, actually. Max HP is 3, attack is 1, defense is 0. Its attacks are super swift, but it should be pretty easy. Just give it a he yeah! So it's basically the generic, a very small generic item, not item, enemy, but it attacks very quickly, as you will see. But I countered it. Very, very nice. That is what I was trying to show off with the sinking Gus fight. If you do the uh, super guard correctly, you could do damage to the enemy. And he is out of here. We got hearts for it, and Goombella got fully healed, which is very nice. But something I want to show off, there is actually a hidden block around here somewhere. Thank you! I'm surprised I found it so quickly. Get the pretty lucky badge, but Mario's attack causes enemies to sometimes miss. Do we have any BP right now, or do we have to level up for that? Uh, badges, we do have three BP. Uh, Professor Franklin's gonna explain BP to us later, but for now we're just gonna go ahead and equip it. So now we'll just have enemies randomly miss every now and again. It is so stinking useful to have this right off the bat and this early in the game. So I very much recommend that you hit that block. And we're just gonna go ahead. Oh, we got two this time. So we can't just end the battle as soon as we hit one more time. Instead, we're gonna have to have another turn go by. Oh, so threatening. It's so horrible. Well, at least we get to see Goombella attack this time. What we're gonna wanna do with her special attack is that press A as soon as she's about to jump. Like, right when she's about to go off the ground, that's when we wanna press A to have her do the Silish command. Very, very nice. Six star points. Keep on going. Now get that coin. I need to get the coins! Uh, can't do anything about that little thing we just saw back there, so we're just gonna continue on with our adventure. Hit that button. And magically create stairs! OMG, oh, it's so amazing! Just climb up here now. And what's in here, I might wonder? Oh look, a totally non-suspicious treasure chest. Whoa! Hey, you, Pikachu, can you hear me? You can? That must mean you're the hero of legend. Who, me? Only the great hero of legend could hear my voice. Yeah, everyone else, nothing. Oh! See, long ago, an evil spirit cast a curse on me, locking me in this box. I was bummed. I've been here ever since, waiting for a long, long time for the hero to come by. So yeah, anyway, big guy, what brings a hero like you to a place like this? Uh, Mario, a word with you. I'm not exactly confident that we can trust this box. 
I think it may be best to not mention that we're looking for the crystal stars. Well, drat! I just said it out loud! What's wrong with me? Oh yeah? Searching for the crystal stars, are you now? So you really are a hero. Well, you're definitely gonna need my help if you hope to get those bad boys. So first you should look for the key to this box, then use it to let me out. Definitely. By the way, the key looks like this. Well, what do you think we ought to do, Mario? Well, I know what my vote goes to. Well, I know my vote goes to finding that key. I'm sure it's around here somewhere. Come on, being stuck in a box is no picnic. I'm counting on you, oh great legendary hero. So, according to him, only the legendary hero could hear his voice, yet both Goombella and Frankly responded to the things he was saying. So, that tells you right there that he is clearly lying to you, so we shouldn't go ahead and open it. But it's a person in a box, so we should obviously help him out, right? It could be Gaimon from One Piece for all we know. And anything involving One Piece requires my attention. So, it's a risk I have to take. For the sake of all, for the better of humanity, I must do this. Whoa, whoa, whoa! You brought the key? Yes! Oh man, I owe you big! Yes, thank. Ha! Thank nothing! Weehee! Fools! I don't know why I gave him a surfer voice! Oh boy, did you fall for it? I burned you! What, you think I was going to help you? Instead, I'm gonna spread a little of the suffering I've been doing in that stupid box. Yeah, sorry, but those are the breaks. I'm gonna cast an evil, terrible curse upon you. Boogie Woogie you are cursed! Wee! Enjoy that curse, sucker. You've got what you deserved. You wanna hear all about the sweet curse I just dropped? Then listen well. From now on, if you press Y in certain areas, you'll turn into a paper airplane. Wee! The trembling yet? Suffer the rest of your days under my terrible curse. Wee! Oh, I can't help but chortle. You're doomed. This curse is pretty rough, I guess, so I suppose I owe it to explain it to you. Ready? If you stand on the airplane panel like this one, the floor will start to glow. Yeah, okay, you're on the panel. Now try pressing Y, and then BAM! You're a paper airplane! The worst part of this curse is that you must tilt left and right to control yourself. I guess if you got good at it, you might fly a long way, but that's the only good thing. So be honest, isn't this curse just about the worst thing that's ever happened to you? I zoned out, what was that? No, yes, I get it, it's terrible. Whee! If you press B, you might return to normal. Maybe. Farewell, you foolish fool. Whee! Beef. What's his beef? I remember I said that all the time as a kid being like, what's his beef? What's your beef, pal? Oh, Kid Knight loved this game so stinking much. But yes, now we have the ability to transform into a paper airplane. Yeah, it's not a curse at all. It helps us advance through the game. So MG. Well, I guess as the old saying goes, you gotta die a little to live a little. Oh, Mario, Goombella, look at that! It's the Thousand Year Door spoken of in the legends. I can't believe it's real. So the legends are all true. There it is, big as life. Come, let's move closer. But first we're going to examine around the area because I want to see if there are any secrets and stuff. No, it doesn't look like it. So, I suppose there's nothing else for loves to do, but... Hey, what's the deal with this weird pedestal, huh? What could it be, you think? <laughs> Professor! What's going on?
The location of a crystal star has been recorded on your magical map. And Mario has learned a special move. You can now use Sweet Treat. Each time you get a crystal star, you'll learn a new special move. I didn't get a crystal star. How come I got this special move? Professor, the map! And what was with all those crazy lights? Hmm. It appears that information related to the locations of the crystal stars appeared. And that shining light, it looked as if a mysterious power was given to Mario. Well, one way or another, we should return to my place and study the map closely. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hmm, aha, I see. You understand it, Professor? My dear, of course I do. Firstly, about that light we saw shining on Mario. By my reckoning, Mario can now perform what is known as a special move, as if the text box didn't already tell us. A special move? Yes, it well, stuff like this is better explained by example rather than words. Would you like to try it out? Sure thing, since it's actually a new thing in this game. Excellent, in that case, we'll go outside since this place is a little cramped. ZOMG, there was a stage right outside his house this entire time. Now we kind of knew that already. First, take a close look out at your star power gauge. You'll see that your gauge has one power dot. Obviously, that's a single unit of power. So you're sitting on a single dot of star power. With me so far? When, in, when you have star power available, you can use a special move. Try using Sweet Treat now. It's a special move that will replenish your HP and FP. So now we have a new option, the special option. In the original Paper Mario game, all you had to do really was use our special star spirit powers and they would do a thing for us. But in this game, it's a little more complicated. You have to press buttons to make the special attack work. Yeah, we're living on the edge now. Sweet Treat! For this one, we gotta rapidly throw, uh, hit the control stick to the left to throw crystal stars and get ourselves some power-ups. Make sure not to hit the poison mushroom, otherwise you'll be immobilized for a short period of time. I like how that was the first thing that popped up. But don't worry, your good old Uncle Mine is a seasoned veteran pro when it comes to Paper Mario. I was kind of asking for that one, but we got ourselves a lot of recovery from that, even though we didn't actually need any of it. Since you used one power dot, the star power gauge is now empty. Take a look. Pew, 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 pew. Even if the gauge empties out, though, you could still charge it up again. That's why the audience watching your battles is so very important. Yay, audience! If you could get the audience excited, you'll build up more star power. Let me show you what I mean. Mario, Goombella, try to attack me, please. And the audience consists of a bunch of toads and one hammer bro. Hey, it has more variety than the entire cast of Paper Mario Color Splash and Sticker Star. Oh! And I unfortunately didn't do the stylus right there, but we got ourselves some star points from that. Nice, see that? You thrilled the audience, so they filled up your uh, some of your gauge. Yes, I can see it. Very exciting. You don't have to darken the entire screen every time that happens, but whatever. Now we're going to go ahead and do that. If you do the stylish command correctly, then it actually will give you more uh, cheer from the audience. So be sure to do your stylish commands. As you can see, it fills it up a lot. Nice, keep building up that star power. Also, the more exciting your battles are, the more people will come to watch you fight. As you can see, that's reflected in the number of members in the audience. And we gotta go ahead and point to it, 16. Hey, it's more than the amount of people who will watch this video probably. Nah, I'm kidding. Hopefully. <laughs> Mario, this is your chance to hit it big. Ooh, let's see that in the top right corner. Nail an action command when you have two matching icons and icon wheels appear. Give it a try. Oh my god, I can't believe I got a bingo on the first try. It's so amazing. So, when you do the action commands correctly, that thing gets, uh, that little bingo thing gets set up. If you do it three times in a row, then you get the opportunity to do a bingo thing. Uh, it could either be, uh, three mushrooms, which heals your HP all the way back up, uh, three flowers, which does the, uh, stinking FP, and then the three shine sprites, which, uh, heals everything, and three stars, uh, fills up all your star points. Uh, three poison mushrooms, however, it will decrease all of your HP and then, like, make the audience run away, so 
It's sort of just a luck of the draw sort of thing. Depending on the icons, yeah, you can help feel up your HP, FP, star power, but if you get poison mushroom, basically everything that I just said that I was too excited to wait for you to say with me. Still with me, the more people in your audience, the more star power you can get. You could also use the appeal command to get star power. I hope you memorized all this. Uh oh. Great Goomba's ghost, Mario. Look at your audience. Does that guy have a hammer? He does, the bum! He means to toss it at you. But it's a hammer, bro. Of course he has a hammer. Otherwise, he's just a bro, bro. If the audience members hit you with anything, you'll take damage, obviously. You have to press X to stop them before they hit you. So, if you see the X icon appear, that means you gotta hit it. Otherwise, you'll get in trouble. And they run away like a scared little girl. That's right, sweet justice! You can press X to protect yourself from the objects that the audiences throw at you. Of course, fans of yours might toss good stuff, like coins. Don't attack them. So make sure you see what you're attacking before you attack it, basically. Uh, well, that's all I've got. Here ends my scientific... Scien... Scientilating lecture on special moves. Sure. Let's go back inside. Let's have a look at that magical map and see what we can learn about the... Wow! Astounding! This map has a radar-like function. It now shows the location of a crystal star. It looks like the first crystal star is to be found in a place called Petal Meadows. Petal Meadows? Yes, the area is a vast meadow that lies far to the east of Rogueport. To tell you the truth, I've always thought that place was a tad suspicious. The name Petal Meadows did come up from time to time in my research. Okay, fine. So we'll go there. Does anybody know how to get there, or what? I'm fairly certain that somewhere beneath the city in a, is a pipe to Petal Meadows. If you could just find that, you'd get there instantly. Pipe travel's efficient. Say, by the way, Mario, I'm curious. Where did you get that map, anyway? Aha! Uh -huh. From Princess Peach, really? Her Highness sent this to you, Mario? You know who Peach is, but you don't know who Mario is? That's interesting. This Princess Peach, this wouldn't be her, would it? Oh, I guess you met her before, never mind. So it is her! Your princess came to see me the other day. She wanted to learn about the treasure. I told her about the crystal stars and my suspicions about Petal Meadows. It doesn't seem likely, but perhaps she tried to go to Petal Meadows on her own. You know, Professor, there was another suspicious group asking about the same thing. Hmm, but I can't imagine Princess Peach getting involved with them. All right, it's settled. Off to Petal Meadows you two go! If Princess Peach indeed went there, your first priority must be to catch up to her. Collecting the Crystal Stars is a means to an end, and that end is Princess Peach. Why are you talking about Princess Peach's end like that? Eh, yeah, whatever. Aren't you coming, Professor? No, I'll stay in town and ask around about Princess Peach and, the sus and that suspicious gain. Besides, I doubt a shriveled old Goomba like me could handle the trials of the road. Of course, if anything happens and you need some advice, come see me, okay? You got it, Professor! Well, Mario, we're off. Now, those of you who are fans of speedruns, or if you're a speedrunner yourself, you may know that you could actually get Professor Frankly to join you on your adventure for an extended period of time. However, I'm not a speedrunner, so I'm not able to show this off. It is very funny, though, and I recommend you look up a Paper Mario speedrun when you can. Wait just a moment! Power Smash! Mario, it's scary out there. Take this with you. Don't you mean it's dangerous to go alone? Take this with you. It's called a badge, and it's incredibly helpful. You see, depending on the badges you have equipped, you'll get much more powerful. What's important is knowing what the effects will be when you're first equip a badge. Would you like to practice equipping and removing badges? No, we've already done so. Are you absolutely sure? This is the last time I'll ask. Do you want practice? No, thanks. By the way, you need flower points FP to use the power smash move. In battle, you should watch not only your HP, but FP too. Did you get all that? Well, here's hoping you find that pipe to Petal Meadows. So I like how uh, Goompa, or yeah, it was Goompa. I always get Goompa and Goompa -pa mixed up, but then I can never forget Goompa -pa, and then it all comes rushing back to me, so I can never make that mistake again. But yeah, Goompa gave us the power jump badge back in the first Paper Mario game, but in this game, he give, uh, the other old man Goomba gives us a power smash badge. It is basically a super powerful hammer attack and only takes one uh, BP, so we could have our power smash and our pretty lucky equipped right off the bat. Or right off the hammer in this case. So now that that's taken care of, I just want to go check over here. Is there anything I missed that I wanted to perhaps get? No, there is not. 
So we are pretty good to end the episode off here. Next time on Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, we're gonna head back down underground and search for the pipe that will lead us to Petal Meadows, where the first crystal star supposedly resides in. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.